Welcome. <clears throat> it's martini time. <clears throat> I'm glad you're here. And uh, we'll have a little more um, Irish spring. It's reversed. <laughs> and I wanted to... Uh, I'm a, I've been obsessed with this uh, Hitchcock shock, this uh, vertigo that we watched uh, the other night with James Stewart and Kim Novak. Uh, I encourage you to watch this. It's probably on Netflix somewhere. But um, I talked about it last night, and it's still been uh, perking like uh, Mr. a slow drip Mr. Coffee. And um, <clears throat> I wanted to explore... Uh, through the movie, this tension between the real and the unreal that the movie was about. As you uh, remember, uh, James Stewart, our hero, uh, had a close encounter with death and developed vertigo, fear of heights, but it was also fear of falling into a vortex. Uh, this, is, this is a uh, traumatic fear of being uh, sucked into a vortex uh, and, and just fragment or just dissolved, your being dissolved. Uh, it's a fear of not being, uh, like in dreams have a lot of it. And there was a lot of images in the uh, movie of, of the Vorfetex uh, or the whirlpool. Um, and we see it on, uh, you know, the internet, you know, a lot of these images of the, uh, it's kind of an abstract picture uh, of the vortex where, where, or the um, carnival house where you have a house of mirrors and you have one mirror reflecting each other into infinity and there's, there's no center. It's like the number pi, it goes on for infinity. So it's this fear of infinity, this fear of uh, losing center, this fear of, of uh, something solid you can hold on to. So the vortex and the vertigo is a fear of, of uh, losing a center or something you hold on to as a center. So that's what, uh, in Christianity, a false idol is something you have made into a center or permanent, something permanent that you can hold on to. Um, you know, so, uh, or in, in ancient societies, it was the sacred mountain. In, in Pandora, in the Avatar, it was the home tree. So uh, ancient societies had centers that were physical. Uh, and if you destroyed the center, you destroyed the society. Uh, there, there are accounts of aboriginal tribes uh, that, uh, maybe in Australia or something, what they would have a center would be a, a pole. And if the pole fell down, the, the tribe would be without a center. Uh, this happened with the Incas when Pizarro um, invaded uh, the Incas, which was a great civilization. But the king, the Incan king, was the center. He couldn't be knocked down. He was, he was the permanent center. So when, when the uh, uh, Spaniards, a couple of hundred men, were surrounded by thousands of Inca warriors... And the Inca king just went, <laughs> had no idea that he was vulnerable, uh, that they would do this, you know, of the emperor. So uh, the, the Spaniards just captured it. And the whole Inca army just fell apart. It lost its center. Same way with battles, you know, the flag. The flag falls, the, the army falls. So it was a great honor to carry the flag, even though you get shot. You see, because <laughs> everybody was shooting at it, you see. So this whole idea of the center and the vertigo and the vortex of losing the center, I thought was really important with, with uh, Hitchcock's movie. And then I thought about the uh, Hitchcock's, the, I call it the Hitchcock shock. The Hitchcock shock. Uh, shock and awe. Psycho was like that. And you had a Hitchcock shock and that. People still remember it. Uh, people still can't uh, take a shower. <laughs> I know I didn't for a long time, <laughs> till I, till I got some Irish Spring, and then I was okay. <laughs> but, but 
But this idea of being uh, losing center, I mean, we America lost its center when the World Towers came down. We thought we were like the Inca king. We were impervious. The two oceans protected us. Nobody could get us. See, America, we had nothing, no worries. Nobody could attack us. And suddenly the towers came down. It was like the Inca, ping, Inca king being captured by a couple of hundred Spaniards. Here we fell apart. So we're still suffering from a post terra syndrome, I think. And so uh, Stuart, our hero in the vertigo, was suffering from post vertigo syndrome, this fear of being vulnerable, the fear of dying. The Buddha encountered this when he left his pleasure palace. Uh, we all encounter it when the doctor calls up and says, oh, you, you've got cancer. You know, suddenly, wow, you know, teenagers experience this when one of their friends die because the teenagers think they're immortal. So it's very traumatic for teens when one of their friends dies in an accident or something like that. So it's an encounter with death, which is what happened with James Stewart. So then he meets this uh, uh, woman, okay, played by Kim Novak, who is um, split between two realities. Uh, she believes she is possessed by this dead person in a portrait at a museum with a necklace. And so she is caught between two realities and doesn't know which is which. So Stuart immediately uh, became obsessed with her to help her, fell in love with her, because he was split between two realities. He needed healing. He had been split, you see, by this encounter with death. So he was, he, he, she became a projection of his own healing. His own unity was projected on her. Uh, this is called in Jungian terms, uh, anima and animus projection. Uh, that we, we fall in love, we project our opposite gender, uh, the animus, anima would be the, uh, the male projection of, a fe of the goddess on a female woman, a mortal woman, projected and, she's, and she becomes a goddess, anima projection. And for the uh, female, it's the animus projection. Um, celebrities become projection. Elvis was a perfect example of an animus projection, where, where particularly young girls, uh, women, projected the animus onto Elvis and then fell in love with Elvis. You know, uh, Merlin Monroe was a good example of an anima projection. So uh, Kim Novak in this movie uh, played a played a, a anima uh, projection, and um, so then, as you recall, I know I talked about it last night. Uh, she falls off a tower, and uh, uh, Stuart can't save her because if he's vertigo, he can't go up the tower. So second time to death, you know. So now he goes into a, a dark night of the soul, into a depression. And then he slowly comes out, and then he sees a woman who looks like the one who died, his anima projection. So now he's got two realities, and there is something funny going on, you see. So he, he meets her, he, he, and, they, and, and, he, and uh, they, so he's got a split reality now, okay? And this, this, is, this happened to us after 9-11. I'm jumping around here, but uh, as I said, it's been a slow Mr. Coffee drip here today. And so not, we've been uh, developing conspiracy theories since 9-11, uh, a virus of conspiracy theories, alternate realities. Uh, and the conspiracy theory is a creative attempt to find the cause of the floating anxiety that the threat of death creates. So we have this collective experience of trauma, 9-11, and we can't remove the, and the problem with terror, this, this kind of anxiety, is there is no certain cause. I mean, it could be anywhere. You see, that's the whole thing of terrorism. We live in this global village now, electronically. So if a bomb goes off in Paris, emotionally it goes off in our hometown. It used to be in the days of just newspaper. It happened three day, two days ago. And it was over there. And we're okay here. But now, over there is here. So it's an emotional experience of this uh, uh, recreation of this fear of death 
that cannot be prevented, you see, because it could be anywhere. So we have this expectation of the big one. You know, it's like in California, they're expecting the big earthquake. So there's this expect this national expectation of the next big one. You know, I mean, the news media thump up on it, you know, Fox News uh, particularly, uh, feeds this anxiety. So to get rid of the anxiety, which has no cause, we have to create conspiracy theories about what the cause is. Because if you know the cause, you can remove the cause and remove the, an the anxiety, which is the effect of the cause. This is Buddhism. <laughs> really, Buddha, Buddha says there is suffering, there is anxiety, uh, there is a cause to it, and there is an ending to suffering if you see the cause. Okay, so if you see the cause of your of your suffering, uh, seeing of the cause removes the cause, and you have the cessation of suffering. You know, so the conspiracy theories are all attempts to find the cause of our floating anxiety, you see? And they keep multiplying because none of them reveal the cause. There is no cause. There is no single cause, you see. So, so the floating anxiety keeps creating uh, theories to remove the cause that has no cause. It's conditions that are causing it, but that's another thing. So, but getting away to, to our little vertigo, is so, so how does he end the, the uh, vertigo or the fear? How does he bring the realities back together? Well, there was a beautiful clue. Um, uh, it reminded me of um, Inception. Do you remember that movie? Uh, it was about the uh, dream team that went down into the uh, dreams of other people and uh, inhabited and went into the dream and rearranged their basic concepts so that the person would behave differently when they woke up. So they would go in there, but they had to carry with them a, a totem. They had to carry with them nobody else knew, you know, like, uh, like this could be my totem, you know. So if I was in a dream, if I went into a dream and I forgot that I was in a dream, if I saw this, I would remember I was in a dream and come back, see. So there was like a totem, you know, for, for our hero, James Stewart, which was the necklace that Kim Novak uh, wore when she was the, uh, uh, when she was the, the, uh, the, anim the goddess woman, you know, the one that died, when she was the other reality, you know. And so she, as the, the, this goddess, Kim Novak, and then there was the mortal woman who was just playing a ruse, you see, to deceive uh, Stuart, so this uh, fellow could kill his wife. And anyway, but she wore, she made the mistake of wearing a necklace that the other woman wore. And when he recognized it, there was a Satori. The two realities, what's real, the alternate realities came together and he had a clue. And so now he went back to the birthplace of his trauma, the tower where the fake death had occurred and uh, he, was no, he was able to go to the top. He had transcended his fear of death. He was going back into death. He was going back and, uh, and she stepped back when frightened by a nun and fell out the window and died. So, so she died and uh, Stuart was healed of his uh, split mind, his, his uh, conflicting reality. And the world became one again, and he became whole. So this, um, I guess I'm <laughs> wandering around. As a matter of fact, uh, James Stewart in the movie kept saying he was a wanderer. You know, he wandered around, you know, uh, wandering around collecting dots and just following your nature, following your nature, wandering around following your nature like a hitchhiker uh, is the way you follow the clues to the unity consciousness and the healing of our floating anxiety uh, that we're all suffering from, you see. So now we're, basically this is an individual quest uh, for healing of the trauma uh, created by uh, external events, you see. So the healing is inside and there is a basically a faith or a trust that you are already whole so you have to 
uh, discover this wholeness by following the clues of your wisdom body. This, this is not following the clues of somebody else's map. It's following real-time clues that your life is laying down for you to follow so that you are laying down the clues like Indiana Jones following a treasure map uh, for you to uh, discover uh, the healing and the unity of the uh, vertigo that we're all suffering from. So I leave you with that and we'll, uh, we'll I've been talking about the avatar avatar as a blueprint for the unity consciousness uh, in the morning. So I encourage you to um, visit uh, um, Buddhas in your landfill in the morning at uh, 8 o'clock and uh, I'll see you again here at Martini time. Watch the movie, watch the movie.